Hello y'all, I am back again for another video. And also at the same time, I am back on this exercise bike. So this video is going to be about cell phone addictions, device addictions. And I will go through what I mean by these addictions. So I am going to first begin with the word consume. Okay, so when something consumes us, it devours, it destroys, it takes, it possesses us. It can become somewhat in control of us without us even realizing it. So, and this video is for adults, teenagers, parents, caregivers or whomever that's leading you, the youth and teenagers take heed to this video walk with me and learn and I'm going to actually explain to you how in real life I do these same tactics and how it can work for you and it's not going to be anything that they're going to tell you on a cell phone plan directions when you buy your cell phones, these are tips that may not be there. So here we go, let's go. So let's begin with the charging of the phone. Okay, we focus so much on the cell phone, the tablet, the device itself, that we don't really realize the real host is actually the charger, not the device. So I will go into how this happens. Okay, so the charger. So this is the way I do things. So, and this is the way I'm kind of leading teenagers and other youth that are in the home or around the home on how to do this tactic. So let's first begin with the charger because we oftentimes we see the addiction it's discussed. The addiction exists in teenagers, youth, and adults as far as the cell phones and devices such as tablets and etc. So the charger, we don't see this as like a real important thing all the time. So what happens is if you're the type of person that to be on your device, I'm not talking about a computer. I'm going to give you different advice on an actual computer. If you're the type of person that has to have that phone or tablet plugged in and you're constantly on it, what happens is a lot of times it's harder to break free of the device because it's plugged in and it's right beside you. So if you have a problem or you see this in your family or you having this problem yourself, don't just look at the cell phone. Look at the side effect of how it's being charged. So I'm going to encourage you to do it a little differently if you're not already doing this. Some of you may already be doing this. For me, it began kind of like by accident. So I created an area in the downstairs of my home, a cell phone area to secure the cell phones. And it's not just for my phone, it's for phones. So other family members' phones also can be there. I'm empathic, so it ain't just for me. I'm able to create spaces that help others too, okay? So in turn, by doing this, this cell phone area or charging area that's in the downstairs of the home, where in my home, where the bedrooms are not at, it's on the wall where in the other family area, you're not seeing the devices. So what it allows us to do in our situation as a family is separate from the item, okay? And 
for particular family members that have already gotten used to having the phone plugged in all the time, there will be some resistance or rebellion at first until they get used to it and see the benefit of doing it. So the benefit of doing it this way, where you separate from the phone and put it on the charger and you have a separate area where you actually cannot see the phone itself, it allows you a break and some form of freedom and it allows you to maintain control of your brain and that cell phone or device does not consume your mind. Because believe it or not, believe it or not, I'm sorry about that, believe it or not, we live in a world where a lot of people are becoming more and more mentally unstable because they do not have control of their mind because the cell phone and the tablet has it. Now, on the other hand, I always remind people of this. Yes, a cell phone and a tablet is, it's a computer type energy, right? But it's not a real, real computer in the way we once were taught. So if you actually have a laptop or a real computer, that should sit at a certain particular station in the home and that device can be kept plugged in because that's actually a computer. So you're always going to have control of your computer because you're going to it versus your cell phones, tablets, those items always kind of go with you. Usually, unless you're carrying your computer or laptop around for business activities. And the way some people avoid cell phone and tablet addictions and iPad addictions is they actually carry real computers, okay? So that can be another tactic for some people where when you see them out, they're always on the laptop. So this is how this is done. Going back to the cell phone and tablets and other devices that are not actually full computers with big screens and laptops and, you know, solid computers. Um, so the charging station should be at least 12 feet or more away from where you are located in the home, preferably not in your eyesight where you can see it. And it can be more distance away from you, but just at a minimum, at least 12 feet. You may do 18 feet. So not having it too far. I mean, if you're in the downstairs of the home, hanging out in the family area, if that's where your washer and dryer is at, it just will allow you the freedom because you don't want anything to take control of you, to consume you. So this is just my advice. This is how I do things. Another thing that I avoid doing when I sleep at least eight hours a night, I avoid putting the item on the charger a lot of times when I'm asleep. And this is why. I also control not having the addiction to the cell phone and tablet by not needing to charge it when I'm asleep because I already distanced myself from it while I was awake and I already charged it before I went to bed. So if you're having to charge your device all night, it can be a sign, but it depends on your work schedule. Okay, if you were on a 10 to 15 hour work shift and your phone was just powered on, and it went off and powered off naturally and you charge it at night. But the bad thing about charging it at night, it is overcharging it and in the long run that damages the device. Once your device says about 98%, 80% charge, 
It's not supposed to be on the charger saying 100% for another three to eight hours, if that makes sense. So my devices last a little longer because I don't have them on the charger so long. And they're not being overcharged, yes. But create a charging station that's at least 12 feet or more away from you where you can't see it. And it's not just limited to just for you. It's the charging station for the family or people that are staying over at your home, apartment, residence, or whatever. Now, another issue on why a lot of people struggle with doing this, and I'm just going to bring this up because you know I talk about narcissism. So being addicted to a cell phone or tablet or things like that is not just something that happens to narcissists. An addiction can come in an empathic person, normal narcissistic person, or a full-blown narcissist. So any personality type can become addicted. And I'll name those again. A narcissistic person, a narcissist, an empath, or a normal. So any four of these personality types can have an addiction. They can be consumed by anything and it can just happen. But this works and it makes it for me where I can maintain my brain and I'm not being overcome or consumed by anything. And another thing it will do is also make sure that your device is used properly. And I'm going to give you a perfect example of this. So if you always got that device plugged in, what are you doing? And I mean, when it's plugged in and you sitting there with it, that outlet is right beside you and it's plugged in. You got your earpiece on, you got your speaker phone on, you're listening, right? What you're doing is you're always tuned in to somebody else. So when you change your tactic and you develop a charging area that you can't see that's on the other side of the wall, that's at least 12 feet away from you, you're no longer plugged in to listening to someone else. So then guess what happens? Your brain will tell you, I need to be creative. And the creative part of your brain will begin to work. And you may start a YouTube channel where somebody's listening to you and you're helping someone. But if you're just staying plugged in, all you doing is listening to me and other YouTubers. And the information that we need to learn from you is not on YouTube, if that makes sense. So the creative part of your brain working more will only happen if you're not consumed by something. You're not addicted to something. So I hope this helps out a whole lot. Share this with your teenagers also. This will help them. Oh. I wanted to mention, because I started mentioning this earlier. So sometimes it's hard to do this tactic because there's thieves in the home, okay? So a lot of times, and we got to keep it real, y'all, there's narcissists, sociopaths, and psychopaths a lot of times within the home. So y'all already know, cousin such and such, or brother such and such, sister such and such, Whatever their name is, auntie or uncle, hopefully y'all mom and daddy ain't robbing you. I don't know, but it probably happens sometimes. I mean, people have parents that are drug addicted and things like that that may steal if they have that problem. But a lot of times it's hard to do the charging station thing because a lot of times when there, there's thieves in the home or people that do steal, you don't want to leave your device at a charging station in the home, and when I say a charging station, let me describe this once again, it's a place in the home that's at least 12 feet away from you where you can't see the charging station, you cannot visually see the charger or your device anymore because it's at the charging station, 
This is what you're going to call it. You're going to call it the charging station. You're going to create that. Okay. And it can be on a table, a dresser, a hallway counter, whatever you want to call it. Um, you just create it. You might want to go get you a plastic storage bin and create it. Okay. But I recommend a hard surface. Okay whether it be plastic or whatever, hard wood, whatever you want to use, it's up to you. It's your creation. So a lot of times people don't want to have it that way because of the simple fact there's thieves in the home. And so you're always kind of like, no, I don't want to put it at the charging station because I don't know if this particular family member is going to rob me. And it, it better not be a friend. Now, the reason I didn't use friend in this situation is because you have control of friends. If you have a friend that you're afraid is going to steal from you because you put something on the charging station, that friend should not be in your home. However, usually with the fear that someone's going to steal something, it's coming from certain relatives, right? So I'm just going to give you an example on how to deal with this. That narcissist, psychopath, or sociopath should not be living in the home. A home is a safe environment where you have zero fear of anybody robbing you. So if you have any relative in your home, I don't care if it's your own child. If this relative is not five years old, this particular relative should not be in the home. In my situation, in the home I live in, I live with no relatives that I am scared is going to rob me. I am not fearful that any relatives that reside in my home are going to rob me. If I had a relative that had that problem, they are not here. However, I had pretty good luck with that. Usually, when I live with my relatives, we did not have that problem. This is a problem or something that hopefully comes up early in childhood. So you can kind of nip that in the bud and fix it so that they know when they're older not to do these type of behaviors. So because stealing in general to me is a childlike behavior. It's not a behavior that involves empathy. It's not a behavior where this particular adult or child or teenager is caring about another person. So that's just my suggestion on that because a lot of y'all may be listening to this video or you may be thinking about somebody else in the family and you'd be like, well, I can't have a charging station, y'all, because I know when uncle such and such come over and get some food, they might take my phone. Well, uncle such and such or uncle such and such should not be coming in the house. Meet him outside. When he comes to the door, say, here's your plate. Have a great day. Because your home should be an environment where you feel the safest and you feel like you're not going to get robbed or get your item stolen. And see... A lot of times when you're living in that kind of fear, you're already consumed. The psychopath, narcissist, or the sociopath has already consumed you because they've taken over your house. They got you scared to be in your own residence and that shouldn't be happening. So I hope that this video was helpful and you can reduce, minimize, and get rid of device addictions. So I hope this helps you so much. Okay, so try this out. It will work in your best interest for yourself, teenagers, and your youth. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please leave a comment. Share some of your ideas with me on how you do things. I'm always interested in hearing about new ideas. And so try this out. It works for me. And ultimately, you see what happened with me. I did at least start my YouTube channel. 
at least. I'm never in a competition. I look at my total views. I'm not into, oh, this video got eight views. This video got a hundred views. I'm not into that. I'm just into coming here and using the creative part of my brain. And this will work for you. It will free you up so you can make your phone calls. You can do other activities. You can wash your clothes. You can cook. You can grocery shop. You will be able to spend a lot more time with your family. You can go out and get your coffee because now you have that charging station where your eyes don't have to be on that device or phone. I promise you, on all God's creation, that this will work. Good luck to you. I've been on this bike almost 21 minutes. I love y'all. And again, please like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment. Thank you. Bye.